Holstein America is proudly sponsored by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we are shaping the future of animal health with innovative biopharmaceuticals, superior dairy monitoring solutions, and the AllFlex portfolio of identification products to fully empower you to care for your cows with confidence. It's working together, a shared vision for a brighter future. It's making a difference by producing the most delicious and nutritious dairy products in the world. And none of it's possible without U.S. registered Holsteins, the world's perfect cow, and the people who raise them. The registered Holstein business is a business with a purpose. It's almost unfathomable, all the information you have. High quality genetics make a difference in what you sell at the end of the day and what provides to your community. And the cow's really the true hero of our story. We have to take care of her, and if we do a good job taking care of her, she'll take care of us. This is Holstein America. Hi, I'm Michelle Davidson, and welcome to the show. This is Emily Bosch of Holstein Association USA. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Michelle. Well, we're in the seventh year of Holstein America. It has been an amazing journey, hasn't it? It has been so much fun, Michelle. In this time, we have featured almost 80 registered Holstein breeders from almost 30 states. Holstein America was started when our CEO, John Meyer, dreamed up a vision to find a way to showcase our incredible breeders on a national and even a global scale. And that's exactly what Holstein America has done. Now, when we started the show, I wanted to highlight the iconic black and white cow. I mean, She's everywhere, isn't she? She really is. I think that the registered Holstein is truly the most iconic symbol in all of agriculture. I mean, whether it's a children's cartoon, rural artwork, even clothing and accessories, there she is with her beautiful black and white spots. And I think that's for good reason. She is by far the most popular breed of dairy cow out there, thanks in part to the registered Holstein's incredible genetics and milk production efficiency. And at the heart of it all, is Holstein Association USA. Why is it more impactful in the dairy industry today? The Holstein Association is really the driving force moving the dairy industry forward. It has so many products and services that benefit not only our members, but the dairy industry as a whole, whether it comes to animal identification and registration papers or other services such as classification or even our Holstein Marketplace Sires program. There are so many benefits that Holstein Association USA brings to the table. And we look forward to learning more about it today. An example of the power of the registration paper is Oregon's TMK Creamery. So this is where the story started. Um, when I was 12, I uh, decided to buy my first registered Holstein heifer. Her name was Keck Mandingo Ran Jess. She ended up being a very good 87 point cow. And um, she was um, kind of the foundation of what I started. So we're first generation dairy farmers. I grew up on the place where the farm sits today. It was my grandpa's idea that I'd make more money if I went and bought a registered Holstein heifer and basically kind of grew the, the operation from there. Our philosophy with genetics in the registered Holstein is we really want to make the cow more comfortable in the environment that we're putting her in. We're interested in cattle that are easy on the eye and uh, like to do their job. So Miss TMK is the highest scored cow that we've ever had on farm. She's kind of all business and she's one of the easiest cows to take care of. So right now she's producing about 120 pounds of milk per day. On the herd, actually, we only average about 70, 75 pounds. So, I mean, she's almost double what everybody else is doing. When we started the TMK Creamery, we decided that we were gonna showcase Miss TMK and make a cheddar just exclusively from her milk. As far as we can tell, it's one of the only commercially available uh, single cow cheeses. So she has her own six-year-old age cheddar. We milk about 20 cows. The cows are milked in a three stall side opener parlor. The milk is chilled down to about 35 degrees. And then every two days we pump milk over to the creamery and make cheese and ice cream. We do cheddar 
primarily smoked cheddar, garlic cheddar, smoked garlic, and a pepper flake cheddar. A little bit of gouda, fromage blanc, and then the ice cream as well, we make a soft serve base. And then we also take the whey from the cheese making process into a distillery and make vodka that we call Calcol. The most interesting product that we produce here is called Calcohol. That's a vodka made from our whey. When we're done making cheese, we have the discarded product of whey and we upcycle that, ferment and distill it into vodka. My husband was changing wheel lines out in an alfalfa field two years ago and he was like, we need to acquire some top shelf vodka, see how ours matches up, taste it, try to filter it, get it better. Todd ends up scrolling through top 30 vodkas from mash.com and ended up Calcohol was on that list already. And they don't rank them one through 30, it was just named in it. So then he sends it to me. I, of course, I thought it was fraud. I was like, there's no way. We vetted it. We ended up emailing the author. She he explained how she loves the sustainability story behind it. She loves that we're taking a discarded product, upcycling it, and then it turns out it actually tastes good to her. So we were very excited to hear that and, and share that with our consumer, that you're actually engaging in something that's a sustainable practice. It perks the ears of the consumer. Having a top shelf vodka made from your cow's milk, it's like a dairy farmer's dream. And really the cool thing for us is like, the registered Holstein cow creates all the raw ingredients to make our products. You know, when we opened up the farm to the public, we wanted to be a platform for people to see where their food's made and how it's generated and what, it, what happens on the farm. Having some connection to this original cow gives people that aren't associated with dairy or cows or farming the depth of the operation and how far back it really goes and how much we put into this. I think for us, just showcasing how well you can take care of those animals and make them comfortable and successful in their environments, that carries the most weight with the end consumer. You can't even fathom how much that, that matters. I think the registration paper is important for us as a symbol of, of where we came from and what started this whole journey that we've been on with TMK. And the cow's really the true hero of our story. So. We have to take care of her, and, and if we do a good job taking care of her, she'll take care of us. Moving forward, that's gonna always be our focus, is to make sure that cow is living her best life. Because she's the hero of what we do, and she needs to be successful. One of America's elite registered Holstein breeders is Bomaz Farms. Hey guys, should we try to give him some feed? Does she like it, Matthew? Yeah, she ate some. She ate some? <laughs> family is really important to us. I don't know where I'd be without my family. Currently have six of our family members that work on the farm, and now we have the next generation. My wife and I have 18 grandkids. I don't know how often the grandkids aren't here on a holiday. Oh, there's a calf being born. Let's go watch it. And they learn from it. I've always loved cattle and I've always loved dairy farming. And I've always loved the people that are involved in dairy farming. And so I really had no desire to really do something else. Morning, Sergio. So I moved here with my family. I had a brother and a sister and my mom and dad. We moved here with 28 cows in 1962 when I was seven years old in second grade. We purchased a few registered cows when I was in 4-H and the herd grew from those 26 cows to the current about 1,500 milking cows. All the cattle are registered or identified through Holstein to have the ability to look backward as we move forward. The registered Holstein cow has always been interesting to me. How can she reproduce, make good offspring, have her offspring make good offspring, and the genetic end of it gives me more interest seeing the day-to-day -day progress that you can make. 
And part of the, the growth of the dairy here has been to look forward at what's going to happen and not, okay, well that worked good, let's go back and do more of that. It's like, well that was good in the past, let's do what's good in the future. The bow mass genetics have really changed throughout my life. When I was a young kid, plastered below our bow mass signs at our home farm was breeding black and white beauties. And the biggest change was being an early adopter of genomic testing, which I think the big determining factor was my older brother, Nate. He went through his master's and then his PhD in genetics and said, we've got better indicators than just the looks of a cow. Let's start using this data that we have and bring it back. So we've kind of changed from breeding the black and white beauties to breeding the blue collar ladies. We really want the cows that are profitable, that are gonna last and that aren't gonna be problem cows. So we really want to be kind of a seed stock farm for the commercial dairymen. I'm excited about a lot of the new technology that's coming in the dairy industry on the embryo end of it. This is where we keep the high genetic heifers. So we're always looking for the best of the youngest heifers who are the highest ones because we want the calves to be out of our best cows. I think the most fun about dairy farming is really seeing the progress through the generations. We have two-year-olds that are calving sooner and making more milk or looking better, uh, lasting longer. We've seen some good things on milk production since we made some changes. We're milking in a 40-stall rotary now. We're using a hybrid ventilation on the barns and all those efficiencies just play into having good cattle, which is really what we're all about. We really focus on everything that makes a cow healthy and profitable. Putting up quality feed, good housing, cow comfort, whatever makes the cow happy makes us happy. And in turn, she seems to respond with good production. The cows are our life, they're our livelihood. We're not gonna do anything that would be detrimental to them, because in turn, that would be detrimental to us. So I think the other thing that we're trying to do a good job of is tell our story. We've got the fourth grade of our local school coming out for a field trip next week. We're going in to bring a nutritious dairy snack to the rest of the elementary and read them a story about dairy farming. Every summer we have a community picnic. We serve a free lunch, usually sweet corn, barbecues with all the fixings. And then we give tours of the barn and uh, growing crops, telling people where their milk comes from. Uh, how we take care of the cows, and 99% of the people go away feeling like they've learned a lot. They didn't realize everything we do for the cows. Anything we can do to make the farm feel welcome, like it's part of the community, we feel is really good. And of course, we give them some good dairy treats when they're here too. When Holstein America returns, it's Utah State University, home to a popular farm to ice cream venture. Bovalis Nasal Gen 3 offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, PI3, and BRSV. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose Bovalis Nasal Gen 3 PMH, the first and only intranasal that protects against viral and bacterial pneumonia. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. Introducing an elite TPI sire from Holstein Marketplace Sires, Do Good High Caliber ET. High Caliber is bred and owned by Dean and Wanda Good of Do Good Holsteins in Oconto, Wisconsin. Sired by Overdue, High Caliber's Dam is a good plus 82 Altazazzle from a deep pedigree, tracing back to the Rudy Missy family. High Caliber boasts a GTPI of 3,192 and a net merit of 1,112. He balances production with health traits and high type, making him ideal for a variety of breeding goals. Like all Holstein Marketplace Sires Bulls, High Caliber is free of any restrictive contracts and can be purchased on the Marketplace Sires website at HolsteinUSA.com slash Marketplace Sires or contact your Holstein USA Regional Sales Representative for more information. We've been working with the Holstein breed for over 100 years. One of the really important things about the Holstein breed that we love 
is the variety of the genetics that the Holstein breed has that no other dairy breed possesses. Every single animal in our herd is registered. It's really important to know the bloodlines of the cattle that we have. It lets us know where we came from and it also lets us know where we're going. This is also very important for streamlining our processes and managing the genetics that we have. Really, when they say it's a complete program, it really is. From the day that a calf is born, the Holstein Association helps us track that animal for the rest of their life. Holstein America is proudly sponsored by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we are shaping the future of animal health with innovative biopharmaceuticals, superior dairy monitoring solutions, and the AllFlex portfolio of identification products to fully empower you to care for your cows with confidence. Welcome back. Holstein Association USA is a membership organization that charts back almost 140 years. Emily, why is it important for the next generation of dairy farmers to be involved? Well, as a young person in the dairy industry myself, I think it's extremely important for the next generation to really become involved in Holstein Association USA. It's a grassroots organization, which means that it's governed by dairy farmers, for dairy farmers, and we have members in every corner of the country on farms with all different shapes and sizes and business practices and styles, which really gives us a unique position within the dairy industry to become a leading voice. And Holstein America is a great example of this, of course. Another example is the work that the Holstein Association does when it comes to dairy policy. Our unique membership makeup really gives us a lot of leverage to advocate for causes such as equitable milk prices, animal ID ID efforts, whole milk in schools, and more. Now, I understand you don't have to be a registered breeder to be a member? That's right, Michelle. You don't have to be a registered Holstein breeder. You don't even have to be a farmer at all to join the Holstein Association. There are so many opportunities in it beyond the traditional services that we offer our members. One of my highlights each year is National Holstein Convention, where there's educational seminars, our annual meeting, and lots of tours and time for networking and fun as well. What a great opportunity. Thank you so much, Emily. And now we journey to Utah State University. The connection from the dairy to our end users is vital. Without the dairy, we don't have milk, we don't have ice cream. And those are just the things that we notice. There, there's many things that we lose without the dairy industry. We hope that we can always find common ground in the fact that people like to eat. <laughs> Utah State was started as the Utah Agriculture School, the land-grant University of Utah. So of course we have extension research and uh, teaching responsibilities uh, as, as we serve the, the citizens of Utah. We have 120 cows. We're in the robot barn right now. So we have a robot that milks the Holsteins. Uh, the barn's about five years old and uh, we're pretty excited to be able to show this technology to our students and uh, to producers and, uh, and teach them about the technology and the opportunities there are to, to use technology in the dairy industry. There's way more that goes into milk production than just feeding a cow and milking her. The robotic system is really neat because the cows can come and get milked whenever they want. And there's statistics backing up the fact that the more times you milk a cow during the day, the more milk she'll give. Over here, a cow can milk five times a day. A really good milking two-year-olds would hit, you know, between 90 and 100 pounds. And currently, they'll get up in the 120s to the 130s. And our high production cow will be 170 to 200. You want people to know where the product comes from, where it originates from. So these cows here, they produce excellent milk. The feed quality here is great. And it's, it's important for people to know where it comes from. It just doesn't come from the store. At USU, they really care about the cows. They care about their health, nutrition, their comfort. And then that makes higher quality milk, which Aggie ice cream is in turn going to make high quality ice cream and the public is going to be able to see that. That it came from here, went to the creamery, 
and now they have high quality ice cream. A lot of people love Aggie ice cream. It's in stores all over the place, so it's really cool to be able to say I was a part of that. In this building, we receive all of the milk from Cane Dairy. So all of that milk that we receive is from USU. That's one thing we're really proud of is that from cow to cone, all of it's USU. So that dairy herd that is well-renowned, that's won tons of awards, is bringing in really clean, great milk for us to start with. And then we use that milk to produce ice cream, cheese, milk, chocolate milk, all of those products the students get to learn how to make. They go through every process with us. We have a class that every food science student gets to take, learning how to make all those dairy products. And they get to see how that product that comes from our cows comes all the way to our end product. We buy a block of cheese or sliced cheese at the store, but we don't really think about where it comes from or the different processes that it takes to make it. Well, it's pretty cool because, you know, they'll bring in a vat of milk, we'll make the cheese, package it, and you know, sell it in a store that, uh, you know, that day or the very next day. And it's really cool to see that connection. Like it's being made so close to where it's being sold and eaten. There's so much research to be done in dairy. There's so many opportunities to use dairy because it has so many important components, whether it's the milk fat or the protein or um, the vitamins and minerals that are contained in it, it's just a really perfect product. So it, we can do so much with dairy, and I think that research is going to continue to propel, especially as we um, include more students in that connection with the industry. The biggest thing I've learned is that when you sell ice cream on a university campus, that everybody wants it. We will have lines down the sidewalk around the building into the parking lot. I would say 5,000 people in one day is not uncommon. It's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of neat people, especially on the campus, from all different cultures, all different walks of life. I'm afraid if we didn't have those cows that we have in our herd that we wouldn't have such a great product. The registered Holstein cows produce a great product. That's what gives us everything that we've got. The milk that we get is so clean, so good, so perfect for our product that we, we can't thank the cows enough. I mean, the cows are what make it happen. The USU dairy has been in existence for a long time, and we've had a fantastic set of registered Holsteins that we continue to build upon and improve. We hope that as we document parentage and registration with our Holsteins, that we can tell that story connect, not just on a large scale, but what we do here, we hope that we can show an example of something that may be done at the family farm, uh, that those high quality genetics make a difference in what you sell at the end of the day and what provides to your community. Larson Acres is a great example of how a dairy can grow with registered Holsteins and stay focused on family. So this is my dad's dairy and farm antiques that he's been doing for a number of years, not his whole life. Um, he's accumulated quite a collection so far. You know, we, we talk a lot about the, the future of the dairy industry, but it's still capturing the history and not losing fact of where we came from. So my grandfather bought this site in 1957, and we grew up milking 155 cows in a, in a tie stall barn. Uh, with uh, four families and as we grew uh, and more people wanted to be on the farm, the farm had to grow. So we put in our first parlor and grew the herd to 1,200 cows. Um, then after that uh, we did grow again in 2010 so we are now currently at 2,800 cows. So today I farm with uh, three generations. My mom and my dad are still on the dairy. My uncle is Mike Larson and he is the dairy manager. He's on the farm. Jim Trustum is a co-owner and my three children are also here helping at the farm. We love dairying in southern Wisconsin. Uh, we get to enjoy all the four seasons. Makes it great for growing corn, growing soybeans. We have some rolling hills that uh, makes excellent uh, alfalfa fields. We all enjoy farming and we want to farm together. And you can 
you can kind of gravitate towards what you're passionate about. We raise registered Holsteins because we're able to use that, all that information that Holstein provides us to create cows and calves that are really what we're looking for. I think the Holstein associations help our business create value by giving us more data that, that is uh, in their pedigree, uh, in their genomic information that we can use to help build better value in our offspring. Holstein Association has helped us um, keep an eye on our cows. We classify uh, with the Holstein Complete. We classify three times a year. And I really enjoy that day when the classifier comes in because I'm actually getting information from them. You know, like, what are you seeing out there? Or how do, how do I compare with, you know, other two-year-olds in the breed today? And I love that insight that they can bring us um, when we talk to them uh, when they come look at our cows and compare ours. That's very beneficial to me. We're really proud of how some of our cows have really told the story of Larson Acres. Being able to look at the registration papers and see the progress we've made. So we're able to really, I'm able to expand and say, so this cow right here, she has, we have all the information on her. We have all the information on her dam, her sire, her grand dam, her grandsire. You're able to really look back at where she came from, what we've done to improve her family line. Well, we've used that information to continue to be productive and to grow this family because they're high quality, right? And we're able to use that information to continue to make decisions for the benefit of this cow family. Larson Acres does host uh, lots of different people here. Uh, we have got a lot of international guests. They want to come and see just, you know, whole farm picture, uh, management style. They also want to see cows. We also get local people that have family from the south. They want to come see a dairy farm, so we'll have them come in. Uh, we do have sometimes some school groups come in. We'll bring in, oh geez, probably at least 20 groups a month, uh, running them around the farm, really showing them, focusing on what we do here at Larson Acres, and demonstrating how over the years we've really kind of worked on improving not just the environment for our calves and cows, but also creating a real team aspect here. I think the biggest takeaway when they visit Larson Acres is the technology, the management, they're very surprised, you know, it's more than just milking cows these days. It's, it's you know, the, the care of the calves and um, the dedication of the teams that take care of them and the, the herdsmen that take care of the cows and the feed. They see all our different employees working together ultimately to take care of our dairy cows. I think one of the things I like about dairying the most is being able to uh, uh, grow with our family, uh, develop the family business that's been in our, our, our farm for just several generations and being able to pass it down to the next generations. I love being able to work with my family and then of course taking care of our cows. Uh, I walk in here and when you see them all eating in here all at one time, it really puts a smile on your face. The legacy that my grandma and grandpa started here at Larson Acres and now that I'm continuing to grow makes me proud. There's three words here at Larson Acres that we live by. It's quality, pride, and family. And we've picked those words years ago and they're still relevant. You know, quality cows, quality crops, quality employees, um, pride. We're proud to be dairy farmers and we're proud to, to be growing for the next generation. And family, you know, of course, you know, we've been doing this with our family for, you know, a hundred years. When Holstein America returns, we meet one of America's leading sports nutritionists. There may be less demanding work, but there's none more rewarding. We get it because we live it. So we know where you're coming from. And with new technology that's changing cattle care for the better, we'll take you where you want to go with the tools to identify and monitor every animal in your herd so you can give treatment that's tailored to each one, helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. This is why Merck Animal Health works. 
We're members of the Holstein Association because we really believe in the quality of the data and we believe that data drives everything. Data basically drives every decision on this farm and if we don't have good data then we can't make good decisions and Holstein Association is a big part of that data for us. When you talk about sustainability, we're talking about putting the least amount of inputs and getting the most amount of output. And the registered Holstein, without a doubt, has proven that she can do that better than any other bovine on earth. Holstein America is proudly sponsored by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we are shaping the future of animal health with innovative biopharmaceuticals, superior dairy monitoring solutions, and the AllFlex portfolio of identification products to fully empower you to care for your cows with confidence. Welcome back. Dairy products are not just delicious. They play a central role in health and fitness. Isn't that right, Emily? Absolutely, Michelle. Just one eight ounce glass of milk provides you with 13 different essential nutrients, including eight grams of protein. And all of this nutrition comes at a very low cost as well. Research shows that milk is also excellent for maintaining and building bone strength, particularly as people age. And for athletes, milk is a natural recovery drink choice because of the combination of protein and carbohydrates that it provides. That's great to hear. We should all be drinking more milk. Now let's meet Aaron Kratzer Kelly, a sports nutritionist for professional athletes and a big advocate for dairy. Growing up, I was always athletic, played numerous different types of sports, you know, soccer, ran track. I think I just started to understand and or be curious about how what I eat is impacting how I perform on a personal level. And so that led me to kind of nutrition in my undergraduate. And I don't think I really knew that there was even a sports nutrition world at that time. So I started running a lot, testing out what I was eating before, you know, what I was eating after to kind of see how that impacted how I felt. It kind of led me towards, hey, this could actually be, you know, a career. Currently, I am the sports dietitian for Xavier University, so I consult also with that university's athletic department. And I work with all of the sports teams over there, so I could be working with you know, a basketball player, a baseball player, cross country, a swimmer, any sort of sport that they have. You know, I can see the athletes for personal nutrition or you know, maybe they're coming back from an injury, so injury-based nutrition as well. I worked for the Bengals for four seasons. You know, I'd be there at meal times to kind of help them understand what to eat, helping with travel nutrition when they're on the road. What are they consuming right after a lift or right after a practice that can kind of help their muscle recover? I have a fueling based approach towards nutrition where, um, you know, I'm working primarily with athletes, so I want them to be able to understand the why behind you know, the choices they're making nutrition wise, but also give them the how to's of like, how can I actually put this into action? So definitely post-workout, you know, I'm offering or suggesting dairy to athletes to recover with, whether that be a whey-based protein powder or chocolate milk or even milk in general that they could add into a smoothie. Things like Greek yogurt are all dairy-based foods that I would offer or recommend to football players or even really any athletes that I'm working with. Milk has a great macronutrient and micronutrient profile that kind of helps with athletes' recovery. On the macronutrient level, we've got a good balance of protein and carbohydrates. And then on the micronutrient level, on the mineral level, we get a great source of calcium, magnesium, phosphorus as well that are gonna be beneficial for athletes in their recovery process. And then on the athletic side of it, on the sports level, you know, something like chocolate milk can definitely be utilized in that kind of recovery phase because it does have a little bit more carbohydrate because we have a little bit of sugar added from, you know, making it a chocolate milk. You know, we kind of want that rapid digestion kind of post-workout. So we get a good ratio of carbs to protein around three to one, which is what we are looking for in a post-workout beverage or food. On the other meal level, you know, incorporating things like yogurts or cheese sticks or cheese is definitely a snack that is oftentimes 
provided for them so that they can get a little bit of protein and still a little bit of carb and a little bit of fat. It's kind of like a good balanced profile there where we can get some good nutrients. You know, dairy can fit in any range of life. We're talking young children, we're talking youth, we're talking teen, post-teen, young adult, old. I think all of those benefit from the use of dairy in their diet. Chocolate milk, it's delicious and a natural source of protein. We'll be right back. Bovalis Nasal Gen 3 offers young calves unrivaled protection against devastating respiratory diseases, including IBR, PI3, and BRSV. And it has a unique blue shadow, so there's no second guessing which animals have been vaccinated. To up your protection, choose Bovalis Nasal Gen 3 PMH, the first and only intranasal that protects against viral and bacterial pneumonia. Talk to your veterinarian and visit nasalgen.com to learn more. Our family's got 111 years invested in the registered Holstein cow. With all due respect to some other breeds, it's the only animal that's ever been bred on our farm. In that registered Holstein cow is the most marketable asset. She's the highest producing. She's got the longest life. So we're thankful that uh, my great-grandfather bet on the right breed uh, when he got started in 1910. And uh, we've just continued that and plan to continue it for the next 100 years. Holstein America is proudly sponsored by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we are shaping the future of animal health with innovative biopharmaceuticals, superior dairy monitoring solutions, and the AllFlex portfolio of identification products to fully empower you to care for your cows with confidence. Welcome back. The U.S. Registered Holstein is the worldwide leader in dairy, but this is also a local business with family-owned farms producing dairy products for their communities, and it's so important, Emily. Absolutely. You know, oftentimes dairy farmers have been in the area for generations and they plan to be there for many more to come as well, meaning that they're definitely invested in their local communities and the success of them. Dairy farms also provide so many jobs for an area and generate a great deal of revenue. You know, anyone from people working directly on the farm to milk truck drivers to people stocking milk in the grocery store are impacted and depend on dairy farmers as well. It's great to see that impact, Emily. Evergreen View Farms is a classic example of the success of Holsteins, locally and internationally. In the early 80s, you know, we were running a lot of land then. There was very low expectations for making a large profit in cropping in the early 80s. You know, corn was very cheap, soybeans were cheap. And I told my wife, if we invest in a couple of animals that have recognition quality, number one, have some index quality, number two, and have a reputation, we can invest, you know, fifteen to $20,000 and not run all that land and have a much higher return on that investment. So I went to a sale in Intercourse, Pennsylvania and bought a cow called Z-Cal Cletus Coral. I'll never forget that day. We agreed on him spending $3,000 to buy an animal. And that's what we had agreed on. Well, when he came home and had spent $15,500 on this heifer, I, I almost had a heart attack. Well, it ended up being that this heifer, after she calved, was the best Cletus in the country. And that put us on the map. That started the international interest and also the market for us. I think Tom is a very smart dairyman. I always told everybody, if I could convince her about doing a project, the bankers were easy because she's a very practical person. Tom loves these cows. Before we got married, Tom, 
Tom said to me, I think I love you more than my favorite cow. <laughs> the registered Holstein business is a business with a purpose. You can identify what you have. A pedigree is an excellent format. It gives you accurate information that is provable. And it should be able to almost, you should be able to visualize the cow, visualize her offspring, her parents, grandparents, and see where this cow is coming from and why. We've enjoyed working with all of the people at Holstein. Holstein is always there, always helpful, always kind, and always right on task. Holstein Association, to me, it's almost unfathomable, all the information they have. But without their database, it's all kind of for naught. These Holstein cows have taken us all over the world, and it's amazing. It, it sometimes amazes me. The people that we've met all through these Holstein cows these registered Holstein cows. It's amazing. <laughs> People won't know my name or whatever, but they'll know a cow that my dad bred 20 years ago, you know? So um, that's pretty amazing to see. And it doesn't matter what country you're in and, or where the person is from, they'll recognize the cow or the cow name for sure. So we slowly developed um, these different markets and we sent Literally thousands of embryos to China. We exported a lot of live bulls there. At one time, we had uh, some bulls in virtually every bull stud in China. We traveled over to Europe. We sent embryos to um, Pakistan last year. But people want transparency, they want honesty, and they want what they want. If I could give the next generation some advice, it would be this. Number one, in your personal life, develop a reputation for integrity, honesty. And then number two, you know, resources on, on farms and in general are, are tight. So have a plan how you're going to make money on what you do. You first evaluate where you're at, where you want to go and how you're going to get there. And, but young people, should join forces with two or three other people and buy something that they couldn't probably afford on their own. And then develop that to the max, you know. Number three, belong to all the programs at Holstein that you can. TriStar, Holstein Complete. Take advantage of every opportunity that's there. And number four, promote what you've got. Take the opportunity to tell either fellow breeders or international marketers, if you want to go into the international market, and there's a market in this country too. Advertise something that's relevant, something worth talking about. And number five, never sell somebody a bad cow. Even though I say to Tom, it's time to retire, <laughs> Tom is just not ready. He said, certainly not at this time because we need to keep our minds sharp and keen and keep moving forward. It's always forward. We have a herd that isn't humongous, but when Tom markets these registered Holsteins, people are just coming back for more. That really is an accomplishment in itself. They all become our friends. What else could you ask for? And, and it's all because of these Holstein cows. Um, I don't, I haven't done everything completely right, but in many cases I did it my way. And um, then you accept the consequences of that and the, the benefits of it and the, and the shortfalls of it. And, uh, but this is what gives me satisfaction. And um, that's a pretty good way to live your life. Holstein America is made possible by support from Merck Animal Health. Here's a word from our sponsor. 
The farm started in 1858. When we took over from our parents, there was only 100 cows. Over the years, we just started growing and it just kind of multiplied into what it is now. We currently have 2,350 cows. There's another 1,800 heifers and we choose to register. It helps to keep track of the pedigrees and to know what's behind each animal. It takes good genetics. You have to have a good sound animal that has the genetics to milk also to help better the herd in the future and down the road. I believe animal health is the utmost priority. A healthy, happy animal will produce. She will live a long time and she will be very profitable. I've been using Merck products for a long time, but the last five years is when I probably started using more. It's been incredibly beneficial what they provide. They have some very good products that are economically feasible, that do a very good job at what they're intended for. The health end of it has really just taken off and where it really pays for itself fast. When I decide to use a product, I sit down with my rep and also with my vet and talk over the best strategy of how to use it. We've had great results. Obviously, the best thing to do is prevent, which is where some of your vaccines and that come in. But if you can catch something that they may be coming down with, the sooner you can catch it with the products that Merck has helps to treat some of the issues they may have to help them get through them faster and become healthier quicker. So I'm currently using the Sense Hub. We have been using it now for nine years, had great success with it because it's like another person walking around here, at least one other person walking around here 24 hours a day, constantly monitoring the cows. The collars and with the products, I believe that the two work together in correlation to help make the animals healthier and be more profitable. Over the course of the collars being on for roughly three months, we noticed a 10 pound increase in our week for milk. It ultimately paid for itself in 13 months just gives you a sense of pride, you know, to see stuff work well. Hopefully it can get handed down to the next generation. It can go on for generations to come. There may be less demanding work, but there's none more rewarding. We get it because we live it. So we know where you're coming from. And with new technology that's changing cattle care for the better, we'll take you where you want to go with the tools to identify and monitor every animal in your herd so you can give treatment that's tailored to each one, helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. This is why Merck Animal Health works. U.S. registered Holsteins have the largest genetic base of any dairy breed in the world. We can look at anybody interested in being a dairy producer and say, what do you want? We can provide it for you. And that, that to me is the economic beauty of Holstein and the association then of course, as a tremendous repository of information and data. So the Holstein is the most adaptable breed with that large genetic base that just does everybody a world of good in the dairy business. Holstein America is proudly sponsored by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we are shaping the future of animal health with innovative biopharmaceuticals, superior dairy monitoring solutions, and the AllFlex portfolio of identification products to fully empower you to care for your cows with confidence. Welcome back. Holstein Association USA contributes in many ways to the dairy community. A great example is its partnership with Western Kentucky University. Isn't that right, Emily? Absolutely, Michelle. It's a wonderful partnership. Since the Holstein Association USA and WKU have been working together, the genetics of their herd have improved so much. The Smart Holstein Lab was started in 2021 after the Holstein USA Board of Directors voted to approve the partnership. They really saw the vision of the Smart Holstein Lab becoming a place for different technologies to be tested for the dairy industry, and it benefits the students there as well. 
Part of the genetic increase from the herd is in thanks to sponsors for many members across the country who have sent a cow to college um, and donated their animal to become a part of the WKU herd there as well. Send a cow to college. I love the sound of that. <laughs> this effort has also helped the university's creamery become a success in the Southeast. So we are the Hilltopper Creamery and Farm Market. We are located on the Western Kentucky University Farm. We are housed specifically within the Department of Agriculture and Food Sciences. We're making connections with the community and with those who would never really come out to the farm. So we have hundreds of visitors a month and a lot of them still say, I didn't know this was here. Hilltopper Creamery, this is Nikki, how can I help you? Our department has been uh, growing into the food sciences sector. So sometimes we're making cheese, some days we're melting down and making queso, some days we're packaging. Um, some days it's all about being with the customer or being out with customers at events. It's very important that we have the dairy, we have produce, we have meat, all of those sectors, but everything coalesces at the creamery and the farm market. All of those products come to the market. For our visitors that do the tours and the tastings, they always have the opportunity to go to the dairy. So I make a great connection with somebody who's probably never been on a farm before, or maybe even our ag kids really enjoy the experience as well. Oh, perfect. So we are getting a very creamy, buttery product from our 100% registered Holstein herd. I work on a, a lot of different special projects and data related projects. And one of the things that I do is I oversee our collaboration with Western Kentucky University that we call the Western Kentucky University Smart Holstein Lab. It's, it's fascinating that in the last three years, the rolling herd average for this herd has increased by 10,000 pounds. Part of that is, is better genetics. The genetics of this herd is completely different than it was a few years ago through better breeding and through donation of animals from around the country. So these better genetic animals are performing at a higher level. The data and what we do here helps to make better cheese. So um, cheese quality is related to milk quality. And so everything that's done here to improve somatic cell count, to improve the fat percentage and protein percentage of uh, the milk that's produced by the cows here, both genetically and nutritionally, that helps Nikki make a better product. When we first started, it took three or four milkings to have enough milk to make cheese. And we were making batches that are half the size of what we're doing now. Um, labor is a problem for us, so being as efficient as possible is really important. So the fact that now I can make a double batch of cheese in the same amount of time, but uh, instead of having to have two make days, I can have one. I would say that I've learned that it's, you know, really important to always have open communication, especially where we are such a small, tight-knit uh, situation. It's always good. I communicate with her openly about anything that's happening on the farm, any changes we've made, or any changes that we're seeing with the cows, just because when it comes to making a product like cheese, you want to know if you're going to have fluctuations in things like your fat and your milk, because that's going to impact your cheese and how it comes out. As a student, it is like amazing to be able to have this type of experience. I've been the one that milks like the last few times that she's picked up to make cheese. So it feels like such a personal relationship when she makes the cheese and then she takes it to like the Kentucky State Fair and wins. I'm like, oh my gosh, I won. It feels like a very symbiotic relationship. Like she wins, I win, we win, she wins. Like it's just, we're one big happy family. <laughs> Like people come to college and they know what they want to do right away. And that's something that I never understood. But then I started working here and this is quite literally all I want to do. I like devote all my time to it. I want to be a farmer when I grow up. I want to own my own cows. Like, yeah, it completely changed my whole entire life. I think it's important that we have to remember that although many of us simply love cows, I love cows. Um, it's not just the cow we're producing a product for a consumer. And that's an important role that we play for the world. It's providing food for the world. And if we provide them a better 
quality product that provides a better experience and a better life for the people that consume the product that we're producing. I love educating the general public. I know not everyone's gonna be a farmer. I know not everyone's gonna work in dairy, but knowing your farmer, shopping local, I think those are all really important opportunities. And the fact that I can use that to make connections and educate our consumer, but making cheese is bringing those people in and gives me the opportunity to do that. Since 2018, Holstein America has shared the stories of America's registered Holstein breeders with millions. On behalf of Holstein Association USA, thank you for joining us. And Emily, thanks for being here. Thank you. Until next time, enjoy a glass of milk. It'll do your body good.